Every single time you heard about a big piece of NBA news or a rumor, it probably looked like this. Adrian Wojnarowski, or Woj, is the biggest NBA insider on the planet. He has tons of sources around the league, sometimes knows things before even the actual players do, and was once referred to by his ESPN colleague Brian Windhorst as the 31st franchise of the NBA. Woj is the 31st franchise. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. He, you, you know, you know how you sometimes need a third team to make a deal work. Yeah, that's sometimes Woj. you need Woj to make a deal work. But now Woj has retired. He announced in a tweet, of course, that he is retiring from being an NBA insider and moving on to other things in the basketball world. But there are three main questions here: How did Woj get here? Where is he going? And why is he leaving? In his early career after graduating from St. Bonaventure University, more on them later, Woj bounced around a handful of newspapers in the late 90s and as he progressed, began to regularly contribute to ESPN.com. But his first big break came in 2007 when he joined Yahoo Sports, where he also realized a singular truth that would guide the rest of his career. Up to that point, Woj was different. He was mostly writing stories the way that pretty much everybody else did at that time writing columns, giving his opinion on sports, as well as reporting on the news that was publicly available. But what he realized was if he was the one breaking the story, if he knew something before anybody else did, there was a lot more interest in what he was writing. The phrases sources say, or I'm hearing, or I'm being told, began to be Woj's calling card reporting on behind the scenes dealings and mostly focusing on NBA player movement, free agency, the draft, and just general rumors. The concept of being an insider was a pretty new thing, but it also aligned perfectly with a sports media landscape that was coming to rely heavily on not only online articles, but social media. But even though everybody seems to love Woj now, he wasn't always perfect as a writer in his early days. Compared to how we know him today, Woj used to be much more opinionated and it got him in trouble a few times. Most specifically, he was very critical of LeBron James' free agency decision in 2010 to go to the Miami Heat, and around that time period as well, reported on some of the inner workings of the decision that just turned out not to be true. His info at that point wasn't nearly as good as it would eventually become, and his reputation around LeBron-centered stuff specifically was spotty at best. But what would happen in the years that followed revealed the driving force behind Woj's rise through the ranks of NBA media. He is extremely competitive, and he works his butt off to to get any advantage that he can. That became even more clear during his next big breakout in 2011 when during the night of the NBA draft, he knew who almost half the teams in the league were taking in the first round and tweeted them out in real time before the picks were even announced. It was clear that his sources were getting better and he was starting to establish himself as a real cog in the NBA media machine. His next big move was in 2017 when the inevitable happened. He joined the worldwide leader in sports, ESPN. It was actually kind of funny that he ended up at ESPN because over the years he had a habit of kind of throwing some jabs at ESPN because he himself was able to break stories better and quicker than the entirety of the company could. And not only would he let him know, but it also just speaks again to how competitive he is. And a year later during the 2018 NBA draft, that comes up again. ESPN was broadcasting the draft and obviously had a policy against Woj tweeting out the selections before they actually happened on screen the way that he had with Yahoo back in 2011. But rather than let someone else take the spotlight, Woj just broke out his thesaurus and figured out every single other way he could possibly phrase a tweet to let everybody else know who the teams were going to be taking with their selection without actually implicitly saying who they were gonna be taking with their selection. But other than just moving up in the sports media world, Woj had another goal with his time at ESPN to expand his TV presence. Prior to that, in his time at Yahoo, Woj didn't even have his face on his Twitter picture and only occasionally was comfortable enough to appear on TV. While at ESPN though, he was featured on screen during the draft, free agency, sports center, and any other time there was breaking news around the league. And ultimately he ended up, as I said in the intro, as essentially the 31st franchise in the NBA. He was that important. Teams would use the sources that Woj had at his disposal and his public platform to their advantage. 
As team building became less about the draft and more about super teams and free agency, the art of leverage became critical. Woj had the ability to put pressure on a franchise to trade a certain player or to get a player to get a new contract extension or to float trade concepts to drum up interest. And all of it worked with the people at ESPN, with the teams around the league, with the agents and the NBA community as a whole. And as public perception and what the rumors were saying about a particular player or team became more and more important, so did Woj's presence within the NBA community. Quite frankly, over the last decade or so, being a fan of the NBA is more about the breaking news and rumors than it is the actual play on the court, and Woj is a big part of that. It's very easy to argue that Woj has had a heavy influence on how we all consume the NBA as fans. But now that he's leaving, you might be wondering what is next. It has been announced that Woj is going to be the next general manager of the St. Bonaventure men's basketball team. And you might be wondering, since when do college teams need a GM? Well, if you haven't been paying super close attention to big time college sports, the best players are paid now. I mean, they were always paid, but they're paid legitimately, not on the table anymore. In this new era of NIL and endorsements and players having agents, you obviously need someone to manage all of that. Big time college football and basketball teams have literal payrolls of players now, just like they do in the NBA, and they need someone to manage it, which is what Woj now is for his alma mater. Inevitably, this will also involve some recruiting and Woj using some of his NBA connections and sources to try and grow the basketball program. Imagine being a recruit and Woj is there and he can pull whatever NBA player he'd like to on campus, which is a very interesting pivot away from the NBA insider game. Now, your last question probably is, why did he leave? Well, to put it simply, his job is a ton of work and he's been doing it for a long time. Woj once described his job as a 365 day long conversation. He is in constant communication and looking for the next scoop. And anytime that there's a ton of news happening in the NBA, he's basically working 24 seven. And by the way, he's been doing this for 30 years. As exciting as I'm sure it is for him at times to be on top of all the news, to know that he has this power every single time he tweets something out to send the entire of NBA Twitter into a frenzy, he's probably just exhausted. But there's one more piece of the puzzle here. You're probably wondering why in the entirety of the video, I haven't mentioned Woj's main rival over the last decade or so, Shams. Shams Sharania took over for Woj at Yahoo not long after he left and by many has been dubbed the next Woj. And conveniently, Shams, who is currently employed by The Athletic, is now a free agent. His contract is ending and he has the opportunity to cash in on a big money deal with ESPN, just like Woj did back in 2017. Which feels like the natural progression of things. Shams is the up and coming guy. He's the young guy. He's basically what Woj was at this point in his career. And Shams has actually recently gotten to the point where there are stories that he's earlier than Woj on, or at least at the same time on. And their competitive rivalry has been a interesting side story of this entire equation, where there'll be people all over Twitter giving tally marks for one guy or the other in terms of who broke the story first. And obviously I don't know the inner workings of their relationship, but I'd imagine that this is now paving the way for Shams to be the next Woj. So I would expect that coming up soon, we're gonna have Shams get a new contract, Woj is gonna crush it as the GM of the St. Bonaventure College basketball team, and we're all gonna look back and respect the long career of the biggest NBA insider of all time. Woj is the 31st franchise. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah.